Oh. I'd gladly pay a Tuesday for a hamburger today. I know I've said this before. But why is it the Wimpy says that? He's got no intention of paying you back for the hamburger. He may have a few people like Popeye and Brutus that, uh, Bluto, whatever the hell you call him, that he'll give something to every once in a while. But if you're just some random person that says, sure thing, Wimpy, you're a really interesting guy. Gladly. He never pays them back. I figure his check must come on, like, Tuesdays. And people see him going into the bank, so they figure, well, he's got the money. But then, um, I don't know. Somehow he makes his way out of the bank without him seeing him. Probably puts on a skinny man's outfit. You know? A skinny suit. A skin suit. A wet suit. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> the original chaps. Although they make your ass look big. But, uh, yeah, so Tuesday. He's not paying any ba anybody back. And why? Because Tuesday never comes that whoever did that, Leonard Skinner or whoever the hell it was, they knew the story of Wimpy. And uh, I, I like Tuesdays because, well, it's a day into the week already. You've had time to recover from the weekend. Tuesdays, I always feel supercharged. And they always figure somebody just died on Monday every morning when I come in because I'm just like, ah, and they leave you alone. But uh, wherever I'm at, Tuesday, God of War, all this Norse stuff and Sumerian things that our, our language is built upon, it's like, you know, uh, Tuesday, originally came from the, what I understand the Norse god Tuas T-E-W-E-S Tuas Tango Echo Whiskey Echo Sierra Tuas the god of war so that's that and then you know we all know Thursday because I was born on Thursday it was Thor's day that's just too obvious. I always wondered about Wednesday, Wednesday. Why is it spelled that? Wednesday, Wednesday, when Wednesday. Ah. Nobody gets married on Wednesday. They get that done on Saturday. Sabado gigante. And uh, then at my own dictionary a couple of years ago, I came across it. And, and it talks about its roots, and it and it comes from the Norse god Odin. Woden. Somehow it gets uh, translated into a Vedna. Uh, Wednesday. There. So the question we have now is that since Tuesday no, never comes, and here we are. What's gonna happen tomorrow? What's going to happen tomorrow? I know what today is. Today is the 23... two-year anniversary of me running into the woman I love and the woman that loves me at a hotel in Idaho where I was dropping off a bum to get him away from my hotel. I was out for my niece's wedding and uh, I didn't know anything about anybody else coming. I just was taking a road trip. I was out on the road, went, stayed in Fargo. Uh, I don't know where else. I was in Deadwood on the way back again. But uh, I'm walking out the morning of the wedding in this hotel that I only had because 
my niece was supposed to be staying there and she decided she was staying at the bachelor house. She wasn't supposed to be for some reason, tradition or something, I don't know. But she had that place and it was the only place available in town, that room, when she said, you can stay in my room, Uncle Judas. And she canceled it and had them put my name on it. So I'm sitting out going out for my second cup of coffee. I already had a shower and uh, I see this guy that looks like a bum standing at the counter front desk uh, and he's talking to the woman behind it and he she's on the phone and she's saying um they say they can't come get you and he's like ah and I'm like ah go outside for my second cup of coffee and cigarette out there drying up looking clean and uh all by myself you know that's how i've lived this life it's it's until the last couple years been all by myself and this isn't bad at all so i come in for my cigarette and that guy's still standing there and i'm like ah Jeez, the only reason I went, I yeah, um, anyway. So I'm thinking this is one of those moments where I can't say no to helping somebody out. I will say no every time because I have to answer it properly before I have time to think of it. Because if I, I and then take time to think of it, because if I answer right away, it's gonna get me screwed. So I just say no whenever anybody asks me for anything. But when I think about it, it's hard for me to say no. And uh, I, I say, okay, I go, I go catch them and tell them, okay. And um, it's part of my sickness. Uh, so I walk back in and I, I look, I say, excuse me. Well, I'm just like, yes. I said, uh, what's going on? She says, he needs a room. There aren't any in here. I know of one that might be five miles. There might be rooms in five miles away but a taxi won't come get him. And I said, ah. I said, I'll take him. It's just right down directions. And she's like, okay. And so this bum, I'm like, get him the hell off of my property. I'm down here by the pool. That's bad enough. It makes me look like a pervert going into my room at night when there are all these kids playing in the pool. I got, got Jesus, man. But it was the only place in the house. And uh, so I, took him five miles away I figure you know that's a long walk for him to make it back if he's a bum he's probably not very ambitious and on the way he's telling me and I'm just driving tell me how he just got out of hospital and uh he didn't have his glasses they were in another state and I'm going what the fuck is this so I started telling him what I was doing there I was there for my sister's daughter's a uh, wedding in a barn that makes sense and um we're pulling into this hotel and i look and i see my eighth grade gym teacher walking on the corner there. i said well look at that i said there's my sister's father-in-law right there and the guy's like well and i dropped him off at the door and pulled up to my sister's father-in-law and said, bop, bop. You know, I didn't go, bop. And he looked at me and he went like that. And he's looking at me. He doesn't know what the hell I'm doing there. And I get out and he's like, Judas. I've known this guy for years. You know, it was fortunate that my sister married his son because I always liked the guy. And because of that, I was always able to stop my visit with him throughout all these years. Uh, if I'm in town, I always made it a point. And uh, he's like, well, heck. And it turns out, he said, I, I didn't know who you were. And he says, I read, and that's what he was doing. He was reaching for his buck knife. And he remembered that he had to fly to get out there. So he didn't have it on him. See that? Those are good people to have around. And um, she says, come on up. 
everybody's upstairs and I'm going, who the hell is everybody? And uh, there I go up the stairs with him. Well, oh, he, he said, Vicky and everybody's upstairs. That's what it was. And I was like, I remember that. I was like, oh, you see, my first memory of her is in the lake at Wawasu. And she's like two years younger than me, but my sister took us both out to the lake. That's her place to go, Wawasu. And uh, I remember just looking at her and I was like, ah. And I, I had to back off. For some reason, I was afraid. I, I felt like there was something like I, I, I had to back off. And uh, so we'd never been together all these years. And her first memory of me is when we were dropping off the go-kart at their house because my brother-in-law had traded it for some, traded something for her or was going to do something with it. And it was my one last ride on the go-kart and I was just ripping ass up that dirt road, pulling power slides and all over the place. I, I, I know that's what I would have been doing and I vaguely remember it, but she remembers me that's her first memory of me is on that go-kart tearing ass up the road and she always we always knew we couldn't be together for some reason and then there at the dam walk in the room father-in-law says look who i found in the parking lot and I come in and she's laying, and she jumped up. She was just uh, lounging on the bed in her pajama bottoms. It was early in the morning, yeah. And she jumped out of bed and came running and uh, maybe I'll have her reenact it one day. She grabbed me around the neck and I was like, oh, it was just like I, I'm home, you know? And uh, that's how we met. And then, then leaving there the next day from Idaho down to Montana where my sister lived. They decided they were going to stay in Lolo for the night because my sister wasn't coming back from Idaho till the next day. And um, I was just heading out and coming back home. And after we had breakfast in the morning, I met them all for breakfast. And she and I had a wonderful time at the uh, at the barn party, and she just couldn't believe that I could love her. I had to convince her there was no stopping me. She thought I was confident. I was just totally in the fat girl, nothing to lose phase, and I was serious. I was not letting a minute go. I don't want to be your friend. That's all. I have no interest in being her friend. I wanted her in my life. And so it wasn't confidence. It was just, it's been 36 years. I can't wait another 36 years to see if this will work. Somebody needs to cover my back during the apocalypse right now. Young and strong. Look at the jacket. When I bought this jacket, I did that right away. And I was surprised to find that all those sounds in the Bruce. Oh, what the in Bruce Lee movies weren't sound effects. That's, that's the way this jacket sounds. And so here, it's the 23rd of June. And this is the day that she and I, this is what we consider our engagement. This is our engagement day. So, I'm getting ready to head east and after breakfast when everybody was in the car and I was shaking hands with the father-in-law. Um, 
she was sitting in the back of the car and she was just looking straight ahead. She wouldn't even look at me. Didn't touch her. You know, there, there was a, we had a very, very respectable uh, courtship. And she had my, I had her text her phone number because of a picture we'd sent. I took my first selfie with her. I didn't know how selfies were taken. I had just gotten this damn phone. I don't know what the flip phones. I don't know anything. You got to do something. But, and she texted and said, I thought you were coming to Lolo right before I turned fully east. And I followed him. And then her, her dad said when they showed up at the room and there was, they had to find out if there was room for me in another room. And there was. Her dad looked at her and said, you haven't given up, is he? And no, I wasn't. That was the only reason I could see to stay that far west too much longer, you know. I was heading home. But today is the day we got engaged. It's been two years and we got married on the 4th of July there two years we had a very fast courtship but it was very respectable it's Tuesday we're reaching a crisis point good or bad something is going to happen this is what's going on in our lives not between us with us Tuesday, what's gonna happen tomorrow?